Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to wish you all a happy National Day. It is my pleasure to join you all again. 2021 is a significant anniversary for India, marking 75 years of independence. But also significant in Irish-Indian relations as it is over 70 years since India opened its embassy in Dublin in 1951. In the other direction, our first embassy in Asia was in New Delhi. In many ways, our national story has been remarkably similar. Achieving independence from the United Kingdom and using our newfound national spirit to focus on working with global partners to achieve our prosperity and world peace. This is shown by both our countries taking up seats on the United Nations Security Council this year. Our countries have a proud tradition of multilateral solutions to global peace. Ireland's first peacemaker served shoulder to shoulder with that of India in the Congo way back in 1960. It is with that spirit we have both taken on the challenges of the pandemic that has been thrown at us in the past year or so. We've seen tremendous suffering in both our countries, yet these challenges have not dampened our community spirit and our commitments globally. I am very pleased to say that during India's second wave of COVID-19, Ireland has sent two flights of support materials to India, including oxygen ventilators, oxygen generators, and other vital medical equipment worth some 10 million euro. The Indian community in Ireland includes many health professionals who are making a major contribution to Ireland's fight against COVID. The latest estimate is that 20% of nurses in the HSC are Indian, but members of the Indian community are also very important in the IT sector, in engineering and in senior management positions right throughout the country. India should be equally proud of the role it has played in the vaccine rollout. The huge global effort would not be possible without the technical knowledge and manufacturing capacity of India's pharmaceutical companies. As our two countries begin our journey of recovery out of the pandemic, we have a great opportunity to grow our bilateral relationship, to create jobs and tackle global issues such as inequality and climate change. I would like to thank Ambassador Kumar for his work in this regard and his commitment to enhancing our unique relationship. I look forward to meeting Ambassador Mishra, who I have no doubt will continue the proud tradition that India has in this country. Let me now turn to my own area of ministerial responsibility, which deals with the financial services sector. Trade between our two countries in insurance is worth mentioning. As the official statistics from the Irish Central Statistics Office show, for financial services, the most notable volume of is trade in insurance. When you crunch the numbers, you'll find 4% of Ireland's imports across all types of services from India are in insurance, and that trade makes up 2% of Ireland's exports to services to India. That data covers trade in insurance itself, that is the insurance premiums and any claims paid for the risk that was insured. However, the value of economic links in international financial services between our two economies is larger than what the figures we have seen published by the CSO because of outsourcing of activities by firms based in Ireland to entities in India. This is not just in the insurance sector, but also in other sectors in international financial services like funds management or asset management or banking. I think it's very positive to see the EU-India FTA talks will resume again after a hiatus in, um, for over eight years now, if I recall. And this, these talks should resume, I think, in the next month or so. I know our state agencies, Enterprise Ireland, IDA, Tourism Ireland, see India as a key growth market area for the future. And with total trade between our two countries in services is worth approximately 4 billion euro per annum. I think most of you will be aware that the Kerry Group, CRH and PMG Group are amongst the most successful Irish businesses in India. Kerry is an important player in the food ingredient sector supplying Subway, McDonald's and other catering related companies. CRH invested 280 million in the cement factory in South India in 2008 and has opened offices in Mumbai. 
PM Group was appointed in 2012 to design a project and manage a 69 million plant in the state of uh, Gujarat. An increasing number of Indian pharmaceutical firms are developing a presence in Ireland through the acquisitions of locally based entities. Reliance and resilience of the UK pharmaceutical company Agenda Mix, which has an R&D and operational development centre in Tullamore, um, which happens to be in my own constituency here in Leishoffley in the Midlands. A number of Indian ICT firms have also operations in Ireland, including Infosys, Wipro, Satyam, Polaris and Tata Consulting Services, with a combined workforce of up to 3,000 people. Ireland and India, we have a shared history. I see huge opportunities between our countries in the area of sustainable finance. This is a complex challenge that faces both Indian and European lawmakers.